What's up, everyone? Welcome to John Versus uh, episode whatever. Uh, with me today, uh, with me from now on, uh, the virtuoso Will Cohen. Will, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Uh, it's it's always a great time spending. Uh, it's always a great time spending time with you, and it's always great dissecting just objectively terrible things. I'm gonna go out on a limb here. Uh, this is not something I say often, uh, but I'm gonna put I'm gonna put it in context. Uh, the movie we're reviewing today is the sequel to the movie we reviewed last week. Myself and Cody Newberry reviewed last week. None of none, no movie from Jagged Edge is good. Like I'll say that. Like that is a true statement. No movie from this studio is good. Even the good ones, the newer ones we're getting, are not even good yet. They're just better than the absolute trash that came before. Fair. This movie, though, um, it, I would. This movie is a post Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey one movie because it was released in December. Of last year so it really isn't that old this movie and i feel and you, you feel free to disagree or agree i feel like they were actually trying a little bit here like it was still horrible but i feel like some of the dumb stuff you normally see was kind of absent from this movie so i will agree to uh i will agree with you actually that i do feel like effort, what, effort was 100 put into this and at least for for me, it almost feels like they're aware of like the typical jagged edge tropes, because like the tropes are there. Like you know, the majority of the jagged edge tropes are one hundred percent here, but it's set up like punchlines, like deliberate punchlines for once to to the degree that this entertained me probably more than it should have. I'm going to agree. And before we go any further, it was pterodactyl last week. Now it's pterodactyl too. Looking forward to the weekend? Yeah, be fun. How the hell did you swing this one? I know a guy. They went off into the woods by themselves and I heard them scream. <laughs> Can you still hear a screaming? He didn't come back out. How is this even real? Couldn't be. Trip out and devoured by this monster. Someone has got to kill these monsters. Right, I'm gonna be in the car. Take what you want. This is a safe space. It's the most significant discovery of the modern age. As usual, I had not seen that trip. I'm just gonna fucking flat out object. This is not humanity's last stand. I don't know who who on the marketing team decided that they were gonna put these people at Jagged Edge are just they are just so full of shit, you guys. Humanity's last stand. Give me a fucking break. Me, I, I'm, I'm fucking I'm actually angry that, that those words came across my screen because that is not the plot of this movie at all. We're nowhere near the last stand. Jesus. We'll say something. <laughs> we'll attack the block. This is not John. Let's just be honest right now. But <laughs> the thing is, though, is that this film, I feel, had it just taken two more steps in the right direction, it literally could have been the next attack the block. Like they could have just made, had they just leaned in to more of the intentional humor, had they. Uh, had they added, you know, intentionally comedic lines, this could have been a very, like, a very even lower budget attack the block like movie. I mean, like that, like, had they spent like a like a few more dollars on the graphics, like that flaming pterodactyl flying away, could have been like iconic. 
I agree. But they, unfortunately, this is Jagged Edge. They are still finding their footing after like what three, four years, whatever. I think twenty twenty is when they when they in earnest started making movies. Okay, and so ninety five plus percent of them are horror movies. Horror right, movies. and so like the they they obviously someone you know obviously someone in the research department didn't realize that pterodactyls don't. From what I remember, pterodactyls aren't meat eaters. They're not carnivores. We're gonna have to we're gonna have to come back to that. I don't know. They might be. Uh, whatever the ones in this movie are. Right. Uh, and they again, they're correctly identified as. There's at least there's no debate in this movie that they are pterodactyls. Yeah, you know, everyone's like, that's a fucking pterodactyl. So that's good. Um, two, we're going to go over two things here. One is uh, the description of this movie, the uh, synopsis of this movie, as as relayed on Letterboxd and as relayed on IMDb, is also wrong. Um, a sequel to Pterodactyl where a rural paintball weekend getaway turns into a living hell. That that doesn't happen. There's no, no. rural paint. They're not there for paintball. First of all, there's no paintball here. The, the five friends go there. It's just basically the two frat dudes trying to get laid. Weird fifth wheel friend with glasses and a beard. Uh, and then the two Back girls. Dead trope number one. Yeah. One who's hot to trot. The other one who's just like, you know, trying not to get raped. Um, Fine. Well, I'm going to get some and you can chill. Okay. That's what happens. Uh, there's no paintball gear. And then later on, it goes from like weekend getaway to, you know, Delta Force uh, versus versus. Uh, pterodactyls. Uh, but let me throw up this box art as well, too, because I'm going to give them kudos. That box art, even though neither of these characters are in the movie and neither of those weapons are in this movie, this art at least captures what happens in the movie, because definitely there is a cabin, as you can see back there, mm -hmm. and there are characters with guns, and they are clearly uh, outmatched by pterodactyls because, as in this one, th that girl's not even ready to fire, and this guy's facing in the wrong direction. Uh, oh, they're, yeah. they're about as effective as the people in this movie are with fighting these pterodactyls. <laughs> That's um, true. Yeah. <clears throat> Let's get into the movie. Um, so one thing I do, one thing I want to point out right off the bat, because um, because as I you know, as, as I am now the. You know, the uh, the permanent guest host of this thing, I decided I needed to be a good guest host, and I actually watched Pterodactyls one, you know, Pterodactyl one, before watching Pterodactyl two, just in the hopes that there was going to be some kind of continuity, and I was shocked when I found out there was. Yeah, there was. Now, whether or not that's a good thing is completely irrelevant at this point. This is the first time I have watched one of these sequels and it actually makes sense from point A to point B. Well, here's the one thing that it doesn't make sense though. Like the ending of Pterodactyl, uh, what's what's her name? Who's in this who's in this movie? And she's not even not, oh, Daniel Scott. Lynn and her sister, whose name I forget, escape. But they escape with all the evidence they need. To expose this, like they have the they have the ledger, they escape with the ledger, and clearly, like you know, there's probably tons of evidence in the house that burned down, and the chief of police is also dead. So, like, now we find out in this one that they're on that that's an island off the coast of the British Isles, but still, whatever, who cares? Uh, pterodactyls can fly over water, but that's beside the point. Um, but that that's abandoned now. Lynn is just like some crazy like. She's doing pull-ups like Linda Hamilton and T2. <sighs> okay. So she's, she's, she's some really shitty uh, dollar-free version of Linda Hamilton and Terminator 2. Uh, and she's, she's like, you know, crazy because no one believes her, even though clearly by what Ash, the nerdy guy, I guess he's a nerd. He has a neck tattoo. He's a nerd. He's the nerd. Um did research on the dark web. So there's clearly a there's a huge conspiracy community that knows what's going on yet no one in in typical jagged edge fashion no one's doing a fucking thing about it i've been been doing some research the dark web 
Yeah. That's how I tracked you down. Well, at least in this one, I can understand to a degree why no one is doing anything about it. I mean, let's face it. How many times in real life, in non-Jagged Edge universe, does, you know, do people have a mountains of evidence for something that exists, but the wider population just doesn't believe it? Just turns a blind eye. That happens. Yeah. So at least, at least there's, you know, some plausible. You know, at least it's plausible why people would, you know, turn a blind eye to this. Especially it's pterodactyls. Like, come on. Yeah. I think the weird thing, and like it is a plot hole because they do try to explain it away, but it doesn't make any sense to me. Like in the first movie, Lynn goes missing. Lynn, her friend gets killed. Lynn goes missing. Her sister loves her so much. That she puts the lives of our entire friend group at risk to go to do a recon mission into the whatever Scottish Isles Highlands, uh, gets everyone killed. They didn't get hurt, but they got all of their friends. She took them there to, to help to find me. Am I missing something here? Why bring so many people? She feels like she's led them to their death. They survive this crazy ordeal, and then all of a sudden they just stop talking to one another. Like, I don't buy that for a second. And they didn't really do a good job explaining why they stopped talking. It's just like, we don't talk. So like, you should call your sister. I just, I just wish that she could have said something before she left. You know, anything. Why don't you call her? <laughs> oh, like, I, 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 did, I did catch that. Like my, for I I know these films don't deserve justification, but that's the one thing. Now that was the one point I think I could potentially justify, because with any kind of massive trauma like that, that kind of trauma can drive a family apart. That's about as much justification as I feel like this film needs. I mean, they could have said that. They could have. They could have said that because but, it's literally her the sister's name is D. I just looked it up. D has right, the letter. Right. So I just don't it doesn't it bothers me that there was like literally zero effort. Like, like when they're leaving, they're at the end of the first one, they're gonna expose this shit. They're gonna tell everybody it looks like no effort was put into it. They just stopped talking and Lynn goes crazy. Like that's like uh, fine. I guess they couldn't get the one girl to come back in that, though she's in every other movie, so I don't understand what right. I'm the busy schedules of these jagged edge actors. That girl does appear. Uh, she did appear in uh, the Demon Within, which I which I labeled as a step up, a step above jagged edge. So maybe she's just leaving jagged edge behind to do uh, instead of D minus movies. Now she's doing D plus movies, and she's turning up her nose at the other jagged edge people. <laughs> What's her name? I think that's uh, is her name. Uh, that's Sarah Alexander Marks. And Daniel Scott's still there. There you go. Um, yeah, so the, these these friends go out there. Um, there's a scene where the one, the fifth wheel, Ash, and he's only he's in, he, you know he's a nerd because he has glasses. Uh, he's on his computer, and the pterodactyl is just flying past the window like fifteen thousand times. But like, you know, it's just what's that? What's that? What's that? And like, he never sees it. And they have like literally the, the lamest party I've ever seen. Because it's just like a light machine and like weird techno music, and then they drink a few glasses of wine, and then yeah. um, the what Ronnie, the friend Ronnie, who I'll, I'll get back to, and her boyfriend is I'm not sure which one of these guys is her boyfriend. I'm gonna say Tom is her boyfriend, maybe. Whoever, one of these guys is her boyfriend, and she drops the line, "I'm gonna go pee," and he's like, "I'll come with you." And because you know that, because whenever I know, whenever a girl says out loud to group people she has to pee, she's really asking for sex. I'm gonna go for a week. Oh, I'll come with you, Ron. I maybe it, I I didn't I didn't go to Scotland when I was in 
uh, when I was in Europe, when I was in, you know, when I was in the UK. So I didn't get to know the vernacular of Scotland. So maybe we're learning things. I doubt it. Yeah. But maybe. maybe. So then they get out there and she's in position. Uh, she didn't really have to pee. She was just, she just wanted to go out and do it in the woods. She gets in position. She, you know, she gets on her knees and that is the, all the opening that these pterodactyls need to just impale her boyfriend. <laughs> Which I think, honestly, I gotta give it props. It's, it's clever, I, I guess. It's it's still lame CGI. It's gar it's the most garbage CGI you'll ever see. But like, one hundred percent, yeah. And then she just climbs a tree and is screaming. <laughs> But like no one go and they're not that far away. They're like 10 feet from the house. Like, you know, and like, I don't know. It's just another one of those jagged ice things where like you definitely would have heard her screaming in the tree. You definitely would have heard the rah, 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 and the freaking thing impaling the guy. But no one hears it. And they're just like, wow, they're sure taking a long time. And then the other friend tries to hook up with Carrie. She ain't having it. Uh and then when he, he, he is a, he, he says some very hurtful misogynistic things to her and, and they don't even waste any time. Like the second he calls her a bitch, he gets killed. It's like, there, hurry for, hurry for feminists. <laughs> Those are feminist pterodactyls. Heard me. Again, these are not good films. But the setups for the kills are so ass backwards hilarious. Whether they, were intent, whether they were making the intentional decision or not, these are still hilarious kills. Like, not, like you said, like the definitely not scary. But no, no, no. But you know, Jurassic Park, this isn't. Jurassic Park three, this isn't. That's true too. And but then, at least. Again, I feel like you have to give like you have to give credit where credits due, or maybe it's just me that has to give credit where credits due. If I am entertained by your dumb shit, that's better than half of the things I've seen from Jacket Edge already. Yeah, I want to give this film all the kudos it needs. Not only are those kills just like quick and to the point, and it's they're bad CGI, whatever. Like I can't even fall for this point. It's happened a thousand times. You, you, I knew it was a Scorpio when I picked it up, whatever. But then like. The, they they begin to make a series of actual smart decisions. Like they just get in the car and drive away. They abandon the other friend. Like fuck her, let's go. And they just they book. And then in the car, they have the most rational conversation I've ever heard. Two horror movie characters in a jagged edge movie have like. Look, this just never happened. We know that pterodactyls don't exist. We can't go back to society and be like, oh, yeah, we were attacked by pterodactyls. They're going to think we're fucking crazy. And the girl's like, you know what? You're right. And that's a thousand percent right. How can we never tell anyone? Who's going to believe us? You know what you saw, and I know what I saw. But who in any state of mind is going to believe our friends got devoured by a bunch of dinosaurs? Like that actually becomes like the golden thread of this movie that like no one's gonna fucking believe this. We gotta keep this in house and take care of it. Um, yeah, and but the one thing I will critique, uh, and you're, there, again, no script supervision in Jagged Edge movies. Every time there's a driving shot, it's during the day, even though it's the middle of the fucking night. So like they they escape. It's nighttime. They escape. The car is driving away. It's broad daylight as they're driving away. Then they get back to the car and it's night. And that happens a lot. Yeah, in this movie. yeah there's 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 no continuity or no continuity direction in these films at all. But a part of me wants to just kind of chalk that up to budget as well, where. 
Oh, give, give me one yeah. shot of the car driving at night with headlights. Give me a break, everybody. Like, just, like, you, you, you need a bunch of shots. Like, it's always the same shot. But, to, but the, thing, the, thing is, the thing is that you have to light those shots. Like, I've, I've been on film sets. You have to light those, like, still pretty hardcore in order to get those shots, like, to not be dim as shit. Or not, like, have, like, the lights, like, like reflect on the car doors and everything like that it's it's kind of hard yeah, and, did, like, one shot of them peeling out in the dark with like the headlight because they've done that in other movies that uh was it jack and jill 2 comes to mind they could just do a shot like that i'd have been fine but to cut to the overhead shot where it's like noon is stupid. Eh. <laughs> I don't know, we're, we're actually we're actually getting real deep into pterodactyl too but <laughs> what's dropped something that's just dropped casually in the in the party is that carrie's dad is like military so even though they're not going to tell a soul, Carrie basically tells her dad, who I'm not going to say he doesn't look like a veteran, but he definitely is not somebody I would peg as a veteran. His friend, though, is hardcore. Um, but he's like a, apparently special forces. He is some kind of English special forces. Um, and she's like, we were attacked in the woods. We were attacked. My friends, some of my friends are dead. One of my friends is missing. She lies to her father, basically. That monster's dead. They need to be stopped. She activates him, and he uses all of his soldier of fortune resources to assemble a gigantic, by by my standards, like a gigantic team of people. Introduce me to the rest of the team. So, after 20 years in her job, Winters and Cooper should know they are. Here we have Bill Bishop. Sir! Marcus Mannix. Sir. Robert, Robert Kilgore. And here we have the girls. Daniel Langford. Michelle Wallace. And Lauren Adams. There's what? Like, he, he has a team of like eight mercenaries. He right. Teams, it's berserk how many people go into the way. But you know, that body count's got to be higher. Um, and so they go back there, but not only do they go back, they have an operation. So even though she knows she sent a special forces unit into the woods to fight pterodactyls, and they don't know, they think they're fighting cultists, uh, she and Ash still go and find Lynn, who has, you know, a, a, a white girl's armory in her apartment. And the conversation they initially have where she's going to shoot them is like fucking dumb. Give me one good reason why I don't shoot both of Right now. Because someone will hear the shots and call the police in. You'll be nicked for two counts of first degree murder in possession of a firearm. You'd probably end up in jail until you're about 70. But then, like, you know, they turn that around. And then they also go as a three person group, as like beta team, in, into, into, the, into the forest as well, which is doesn't make any sense, but I guess I'm here for it. I, it that, that kind of falls under, like, that kind of falls almost falls under aliens logic to me a little bit yeah. because like if you didn't know apparently James Cameron's like big uh, big vision for aliens was an allegory for the Vietnam War where yeah. the uh, where the soldiers are out you know out um, are essentially outnumbered and out of their depth and that's why, you know, that's why essentially they get their asses handed to them. And so that's why, I kind of, you know, so it's almost like they're trying to go with something similar here. Are you where, saying uh, this movie is inspired by aliens? Because that, I'll, I'll just say that that's true. That is true. <laughs> it, the more I think, the more I think about like the mercenaries going in there, guns a blazing, not knowing they're not truly understanding their enemy. And not being able to hit the broadside of a bar. More of a coincidence than in something they did on purpose. But yeah, it is. It, it it's like aliens. If it was like high school production of aliens, one thousand percent. I would say maybe like, if 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 the crew from Super Eight, you know, like the, like the kids from Super Eight, were attempting to make aliens, this is almost like what they would do. And like, here's another weird thing that happens, right? So. Not only are there eight mercenaries in the group that go up there, the second in command, I believe his name is John Gray. I'm glad I share a name with that guy. Uh, <laughs> sent a scout ahead. Uh, so there's a ninth person in the group. And this guy is just standing in front of the house. And he runs afoul of the pterodactyls. And apparently he forgets how to use a shotgun. 
and does not succeed in killing the pterodactyl that kills him. No, no, no. But they show up to the building, and it's not a red flag that this professional mercenary reconnaissance person is missing. He's mi they don't even mention that they should contact this guy until well after he's dead, and other people are dead. Like, oh, what, what happened to the scout? Like, oh, he's not responding. That should have been the first thing you did. And I'm not a professional soldier, but I'd like well, to think that professional soldiers would do that. See, here's my thing, though. This goes back to what I was saying earlier, that all the jagged tropes are here. Not doing the smart thing right from the get-go is absolutely a jagged edge thing. But at least here, they're addressing what the smart thing was at some point, whereas in other jagged edge films, they just leave that on the table entirely. And the, uh, okay, again, not a professional soldier. I don't believe you are either. Um, however, I would like to imagine that if, because like they, they do a huge speech where like these people are like hand selected to be experts, they can kill fucking anything. I mean, Not only that, but they apparently don't know how to use anything other than handguns. Because every time they try to use a grenade, it just goes fucking very poorly for these people. Like, like the one guy blows himself up. Like he's just like, he throws it and it blows up as he releases it. Like just, that's not even how grenades work. But hey, no. whatever. So like the the one criticism I'll have, like if you're going to have eight or nine guys, where's your one sniper? Right. Like they're the not some of them have like handguns, some of them have rifles. The one dude has a fully automatic machine gun. Uh they're firing, like as, as far as I know. And you see the pterodactyls like getting hit. But like how are they not killing? Like they're not killing them. Like there's there's times when they're at the lands right in front of them, all of them, half dozen of them, open fire at point blank range, and still one of them gets killed, and the pterodactyl like, gets away. <laughs> like I don't understand that. Now we don't like you know the one thing we don't fully know is like how how thick a pterodactyl skin is. I'm not about to research that for this. I don't think they did the research either. You think but my, but my, one, my one question, though... Well, 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 my one question, though, is that if, if the pterodactyl is right there, why are you not aiming for the head? Yeah, and you have a shotgun. But they have military, the eye. military shotguns, and they're just not killing these guys. They eventually kill them. Uh... Okay, and then, you know, we have the whole, like, Jason X thing where, like, the pterodactyls, like, you know, systematically pick off all of these paramilitary people. Um, and then, uh, and again, I'm gonna, once again, give a Jagged Edge film kudos, they throw a twist at you that uh, no one saw coming. The, the second-in-command guy, John, who assembled this crew of mercenaries, actually is being paid by another source. I don't know how this other source knows about it or knows to pay him. Or anything like that, but he's being paid by some like shadow cabal to like take the eggs. And he, the speech this dude gives, and I'll put it in here, like just like he goes from like grizzled, he goes from like grizzled, oh, it's saying some shit, bro, governor, like a uh, British military dude. All of a sudden, he's like giving speeches about like how, how the, this science will save mankind. And uh, it, it, it was such a term for this dude that I was like, is that the same guy? Humans are pathetic, Rob. These are our gods. The Yolos we should be worshipping. Yeah. It, consistency will never be Jagged Edge's strong point, I don't think. But that speech, again, had me 
laughing so hard. Like why? Like why? Like why are you go? Like why are you doing like the complete like one eighty of the Alan Grant speech from Jurassic Park three? Like it's so hilarious, even if it's all for the wrong reasons. Yeah, I hope he had lived that because I, I would total respect for that dude. So then, like, of course, like that, the, you know, all of a sudden the daughter who isn't militarily trained at all becomes the best soldier out of all of them and she saves herself. And then the one, the geek friend sacrificed himself when he absolutely didn't need to. They could have all been into the car. Right. Um, and if they, they allegedly kill all the pterodactyls, but this is Jagged Edge, baby. The dad, Carrie, and Lynn make it out alive. And then there's a final jagged edge scene where, like, all of a sudden, someone finds an egg. I don't know who the fuck showed up. And the aftermath of an explosion, and there's one egg still left in the nest. To find the egg, because everybody's dead. But there's, like, there's one egg remaining. Where was Charlie team? I didn't know it was a fucking Charlie team. Like, it's crazy. It's totally jagged edge. Anything we left out of this movie? I don't think so. All right. Well, uh, normally uh, this is the point in the film when I would say um, the champ, the champ Luis Boos has asked us to create drinking games, but unfortunately Luis is no longer the champ, and I don't think Dylan drinks. So um, we're just gonna go and do our own thing, and there'll be new, there'll be more segments later. But will 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 also tell us a drink that we can make, and we're also still gonna give you a drinking game. It'll just be like the Your Milwaukee Beers drinking game. This movie. So, Will, have you prepared a drink in the game this time or just a game? Oh, I did prepare a drink because okay. I, as soon as, like, as soon as I watched this, it's like I decided to plug words in to Google to see if I see if something existed. And I, I'm beginning to think that th I've been doing this consistently enough for these films that I'm thinking that people just make drinks up and call them backwards as shit for no apparent reason. There is literally a drink called the pterodactyl cocktail. All right. Now after after seeing the you know, after seeing the ingredients of the drink, whoever made this was clearly high, you know, was clearly high off their goddamn mind. But let's hear it. Okay. Now I will I will point this out. In the ingredients under uh, under a how to make the word throw is in all caps for no reason whatsoever. So it, fe it feels like the guys who made this film maybe made the cocktail as well. Possibly. So it says throw all ingredients with ice and strain into chilled glass. Make sure you throw it. So uh, it is one and one third ounce, very specific. Very specific. Uh, one, and, one and one third ounce. Uh, Heyman's London Dry Gin. The more, the more I'm thinking about this, the more they did this. It, it, it was 100 percent the makers of this fucking movie. Gin drink? Oh boy, you strap in. What else? Oh, it gets worse. Okay. Five sixths an ounce. What? I, I know, I know. Okay. <laughs> Five sixths an ounce vermouth di Torino. If you have vermouth, just throw it fucking in there. I don't care. Yeah, we're not we're not saying you have to get these brands. Just get these liquors. Exactly. A uh, half ounce of I I might pronounce be pronouncing this wrong. I'm just gonna go out there. Gentian liquor. It says, for example, soothes sailors, etc. I have no idea what the hell this is. We'll put we'll put the recipe in the description of this video. Go ahead. Oh yes. And this is my favorite one. One twelfth of an ounce. Why? Okay. One twelfth of an ounce. Of absinthe? Like, what is it? It is absinthe. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I hope the glass of absinthe. All right. I have absinthe. It's good. We're good. But have you ever mixed have you ever mixed absinthe with gin before? I, that sounds like a horrible idea. And now they're there is a drink that I had once where you mix, I think it was absinthe. Uh, it was absinthe, melon liqueur, and I think it was. That makes sense. I think it was vodka as well. That's probably not offensive. And it was called, and it was called the Green Lantern. That thing fucked me up. 
So I can only imagine this would just do the same. But a tw- how do you measure a twelfth of an ounce? That's just like you coat the glass with it. That's a twelfth, I imagine. Because I've seen drinks where you just coat the glass in absence. So I imagine that's then why don't you say that? Because, you're, because you're no, the people who made the people the people who made this made that and spent more time with this than they did with the script. <laughs> Okay, so we're gonna have we're gonna make these uh, pterodactyl cocktails, and then what's the drinking game that you play with it? So the drink, so the fr- so obviously the drinking game that I have has to involve every single time someone gets killed. Okay, that's fine. by a pterodactyl. It has to be, you know, it has to be in there, and it has to be worth at least two drink, you know, two sips per you know, per kill. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna add on to that. I'm gonna say like. You need it. You need to have a fun, slow motion functionality. So I'm going to require you to have slow motion functionality from this, this drinking game. Anytime a group of the commandos are shooting, and one of them clearly passes through the gunfire of one of again like, you because know, it, it's just CGI muzzle fire. Anytime one of them clearly should be getting shot by friendly fire, take a shot. Like because that happens. Wait, they're they're strafing through each other and no one's getting shot. Do that. Absolutely. Not. I- that that actually follows into what I was going to say because I was like, whenever one of these dipshits kills themselves, finish your drink. <laughs> yeah, because like seriously, like that two seconds, oh, 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 boom. It's like they, they also go out of their way to like make sure you know these are tough military types because they are and they did they did not bring enough ammunition. They constantly run out. Like, this is one thing the one guy runs out of ammunition, and then all of a sudden it's like, come on, motherfucker. <laughs> You know, he pulls he pulls a Julius in a uh, front of the thirteenth party, and he goes to like like puts up his dukes to like fight the pterodactyl. Like that guy's fucked. And believe it or not, he's fucked. Yet when Lynn is like one on one with the pterodactyl, she stabs it to death with a knife. <laughs> Like mind blown. She is she is Linda Hamilton. Kudos, kudos to Lynn. Every, uh, uh, every so every single time there's a big jet of blood, you need to take a drink. Yeah. Because yeah. there's a surprisingly a lot for a Jack Edge film. There's a surprisingly a lot of like blood post Winnie the Pooh. There was blood budget in post Winnie the Pooh. We're living in post Winnie the Pooh Jack and Edge world, so it's the same as it was in Croc. It's, and all those movies like where they, they just oh, we, we can afford Three gallons of blood. We're good. They use it. Yeah. Um, also, and- did you notice at the end of the movie, Carrie has like this gigantic like burn welt on her head, but they never show you how she got it. Please. Run. Run. I'll, True. I'll probably, like she has, it just looks like she was hit with a freaking like a like, glance off of the flamethrower. It's like a giant charred thing on the side of her head, but you never see her get hurt. Maybe, maybe the flaming pterodactyl flew a little close to the yeah, close to it. or something. Yeah, that could have been it. They should have put that in there. I'd, I'd love to see it. I, I, I wish these films came with outtakes because I would love to see what was taken out. I, I, it would be. You couldn't discern that from the film, I imagine. Some of the outtakes, I believe Jagged Edge, the outtakes might be better than what they kept. And that's why they don't do it. That's probably true. That being said, that's Pterodactyl 2. We gave you the whole deal. I'm sure you'll enjoy the clips I'm going to add here. But uh, if you made this far in the video, like, comment, subscribe, share, join the Facebook group, go to the TikTok. There's all kinds of stuff happening all the time there. Uh, Mondays, this show, all the time. Thursdays, why we love horror at 8 and then Horror Headlines goes live on TikTok at 9 o'clock. And then every Friday, Why We Love Horror Trivia. Please watch all those shows. We, we love your support. Until then, this has been John Versus. And I'm John, and that's Will. Later.